buddy Lawrence here with Dirty Basement Terrain, coming at you with another one. After the last build, the horror blood fountain, it was a rather involved build, and I just needed a mental palate cleanser, as I've been saying on Discord. So I figured, oh, something small, just, you know, nice little piece of scattered terrain. You never have enough scattered terrain. So I thought, well, you know, I could, I could use like a little water feature, like maybe a well or something. And I was like, Let, let's add some fire to it. Um, and let's make it a wishing well. So here is what I came up with. A flaming, flaming wishing well. Now, a little hard to see in this light, but you'll see that the pictures at the end. There are actually... Tiny pieces, of, tiny pieces of gold at, at the bottom of this well, which, if your PC players get greedy and try and take the wishes out of the well, could be a trap. <laughs> but again, this is what I just, I just wanted a nice little piece to build. So, let me show you how I did it. So let's get to it. Okay, to start off with, I'm gonna get on my proxon table with my circle cutting jig from Shifting Lands this big chunky three inch p thick piece of foam and cut out a circle don't ask me how big that is this entire thing was eyeballed <laughs> so i was like eh, that's too big let's cut it smaller i said i think eh, maybe like three and a half inches wide um, but and of course you know in the middle of a cut the wire snaps but you know a couple minutes later and i'm good to go it happens. So back on, try and get it to where I had to cut, and spin it around. Again, I'm not 100% sure on the size. Again, this is just all eyeballed. But this is the size I'm going to use, so I'm going to cut off two slices here for the top and the bottom. Easy peasy. Okay, now here I'm actually just shaving off a little bit of the outside of the walls of the well because the top and the bottom pieces that I cut out earlier need to hang over the edge or stick out from the bottom. I think it looks good that way, so that's what I'm doing. But I, So right here I'm just shaving off like maybe a sixteenth of an inch at a time. Just take small amounts off, not big, big chunks for something like this because once it's off it's off and if you take too much it's a royal pain to try and build it back up so okay now that I've got that I need to cut out this middle of this well so it's just so you, it's well you need an open space in the middle for the water and everything but now I got what I want Push it out, check it. Yeah, yeah, that works. So now I have the walls of the well uh, cut out. Now I need to cut out the top, the middle of the top. So I need to check this here. I just, you know, as you can see, I traced it. And for some reason, I wanted to cut the bottom out too, which now I'm realizing that was a mistake. I shouldn't have done the bottom. I should have just done the top. You'll see how I fix this problem later. But I got the tops and the bottom done. Easy. Okay, well, I think it was about this time that I realized the mistake of hollowing out the middle of the bottom one. So this is what I'm doing to fix it. I'm just shaving off some of the insides of that one. And it's going to go in the middle of the well here. And I'm going to shave off another slice just so I can have two layers to. Because the bottom layer of that well is going to sit. Let, it's just to even it out. Okay, now I need to actually start making the pedestal. Or the, where the cauldron sits. It's a pretty simple process. You basically use this and shave more and more and more up. Off till I get it to where I want. 
Okay, that looks good. That looks good. Put that off to the side. <laughs> As you can see, I grabbed another piece because I realized I had made a mistake during the cutting process. I was like, oh, I was like, well, this is going to be a pain. Well, I have off cuts. Let me grab one to fix this problem I just created. Because I cut that first piece too thin and I need, I wanted the pieces to get smaller and smaller as it got towards the cauldron. And that's going to work. I'll cut another piece. Like I said, this was my screw up, so I went with this route, and it wound up going to the finished piece. Yeah, that works. That works. Obviously, those are too long right now, but that'll be corrected later. Okay, here I'm actually going to be cutting everything down to the height I wanted: the walls, the pedestal pieces, everything. The walls is the only measurement I actually remember it an inch and a half. But this is a matter of cut it to the height you want it, to the height you think looks good. You don't have to follow what I do exactly. Do what you want. And here I'm just cutting some of the pedestal pieces to the actual height I want. And I keep, keep the walls just next to me so I know... Okay, does this look good to me? So that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm just basically trimming it until I think it looks good. And of course, now I need to actually do the cauldron piece. That needs to be thin. I think that's like half an inch, maybe three quarters of an inch thick. Again, this is more of a make it look good. And here, you know... Before I go any further, before I, you know, move the Proxon off the table, I just wanted to dry fit everything, make sure it looks okay. Will this work? And he's like, yeah, good. Okay, now well, let's get the hot glue gun out and start gluing stuff together. You know, like the all these rings need glued back together so they're one solid piece. I prefer hot glue because it's quick. And I don't have to sit there for an hour waiting for it to dry. But again, this is a pretty quick and simple step. Any of the pieces you want to glue together now, now is the time to glue. Also, texturing. Now you notice I'm actually texturing the column pieces here, or the pedestal pieces before I actually glue them together. Well, this is for ease. I've learned over previous projects. It's a lot easier sometimes to do this foil ball texturing prior to put them together because there's little like edges that are hard to get at with the foam. And like here, it's just, it's easier. On top of the pedestal or column piece, I want a cauldron, or basically a bowl for the fire. And I'm just trimming the piece that I made with my X-Acto knife, cutting it at an angle until I get to the depth I want. Then I'll flip it over and carve, 
and trim away the sharp edges just to get like a rounded shape on the bottom. Of course, a good old finger helps too. <laughs> it's still not quite big enough, so I'm going to trim a little more. Yeah, it, this is a trim until you're happy. But don't trim, don't take massive chunks out, just shave, shave, shave. And once you're happy, texture away. This is a pretty simple step. And since I have the foil out, and I forgot the texture, the well walls, so I'll just take care of that now since I was already texturing anyhow. <laughs> Now, instead of a standard like brick pattern, you see most of the time I wanted to do cobblestones for this. So I grabbed my massively expensive carving to pencil tool, number two pencil, always have one with you, <laughs> and just started carving in a random cobblestone pattern. And sometimes you'll see it's like, you know, people will use a knife to cut in and then use a pencil to widen the lines. But... Again, this project was a palette cleanser for me, and I just wasn't planning that far ahead. I just kind of wanted to go with what I thought would look good. So I just started carving up and press, punching in the lines with the pencil. And the thing is, when, you're, when you do it like this, don't use a sharp pointed pencil. You want a dull point on your pencil because a sharp point will actually tear into it. And you just want to impress lines into it, which is exactly what I'm doing. And once I get done with the outside, I'm also going to have to do the inside. This is a little time consuming. Yeah, but it actually looks pretty good once you're done. And now I'm going to carve a few lines into the top piece because this I want want the consent the whole circle not to be one solid piece like they actually placed multiple pieces for this. 
I don't know why I used the ruler. It was completely unnecessary, which I figured out when I went to the second piece that I had to do. It, this is just a matter of doing straight lines from one end to the other. And then carving in some cracks. Cracks always add a little extra to the piece. And here I'm just black basing the entire piece. I had some leftover primer from the previous project in a cup, so I just start, decided to use that so it wouldn't go to waste from the previous project. Now, being that this is an all foam project, I normally would just use my black Mod Podge, but like I said, I already had this in a cup and I didn't want to waste it. But normally, again, I would use black Mod Podge, but this is just uh, some black prim airbrush primer that I had left over and I just decided to brush on the entire piece. Okay, now for the fire itself, I, sorry, I did not actually record the part where I was making the flames themselves. But all I did was I ran a small bead, a bead of hot glue on the glass and then just teased it up in the couple, couple lines. And then I did another layer on those and went up. And then I did smaller pieces in the same manner. And peeled them all off the glass. And now I'm actually gluing them on top of each other, as you can see. I forget who I, who, I wish I could remember the name of the creator that put a video out doing this method, but hot glue flames can look pretty good. Plus they're all, actually I think I saw DM Scotty do it. Yeah, I think, the, I think it was a DM Scotty video that I saw this done on. Of course, the craft father. <laughs> but again, I'm just gluing all the pieces together into a rough, like, chaotic fire shape. But again, it, the nice thing about this way is they are partially see-through, which I, I think looks good for fire. Well, of course, now I'm going with my go-to dark blue-gray from Apple Barrel for my base coat for all the stone work. And I said, with this, I'm going with 100% coverage. Now, you notice I have, I'm not pick. it wasn't until like the last minute that I decided to paint the cauldron in stone color. I had toyed around with the idea of going with a metallic, but it, then I was like, yeah, you know what, all stone. Now here I've been painting the cobblestones in random color and then using a tattered sponge to put it on the flatter spaces and on the column itself. This is done to make, to generate a little more visual interest because not all stone is gray. You're going to see streaks of color or different color stones. I do this for a little more visual interest. Okay, let's get the mid-tone on. Now, this is my go-to for mid-tone, which is pewter gray from Apple Barrel. I'm going for like 
75, 85% coverage. Leave the deepest recess alone. And this can be a little bit annoying trying to get the inside, but at this point, I'm committed, so I'm going to do it. Well, maybe I should be committed. I don't know. <laughs> but like I said, a 75 to 85% coverage. Now, you don't want, this is an overbrush, not a, like a dry brush, or some people will call it a heavy dry brush. I, it's an overbrush for me. And you don't want to get, you don't want to put it on really thick either. Yeah, you know, you're not going for a slow, just a quick, quick, quick overbrush like style. Because you can still see a little bit of the other colors popping through. Which you want. Now here I'm using my go-to for a highlight color, granite gray. Just a real quick and dirty, light dry brush. Get all the raised edges and whatnot. And of course I'm using a Dollar Tree makeup brush. Really cheap. And you know what? I really don't care if I mess it up. Okay, now I'm doing the wash. I originally started out with a brown wash, but I was like, no, this ain't working for me. So grab my homemade black wash and just covered the whole thing with the black wash. A pretty simple process. Some people say dab, some you know, some people say don't brush. I, I do both. So and I honestly haven't really seen if you're doing a really delicate paint job, yeah, then dab it, but I'm not. <laughs> okay, now that the wash is all dry, Let's bring up those highlights again with the granite gray. Basically any light gray will do. I've seen people use other colors too. So whatever floats your boat. And I'm just trying to bring up all the highlights to all the different, you know, I'm making it look pretty. <laughs> again, this is a quick and easy step. No big deal. I'm actually going to hot glue the flames to the end of this the end of this handle for one of the sponge brushes I use just to make it easy to paint later on. Pretty simple. And here I'm finally attaching the pedestal into the pond itself or the well. Again, hot glue, quick, done. All right, now I had some I get, you know what, I think I accidentally deleted the, most of the footage for this. I just used a couple contrast paints and started out with a yellow, then went to an orange, then a red for the tips and whatnot. But the thing is, I did not let the paints dry. It was kind of like a wet blended fire with contrast paints. Okay, this is a wishing well. Wishing wells have money in the bottom of them. So I got some gold paint and just started doing dots on the bottom and no particular pattern or anything, but it's like I said, this is a wishing well. This isn't just a well or a fountain. It's a wishing well. So I, I wanted there to be money in the bottom. You can use glitter or anything, whatever you want, but okay. Now let's actually start adding some of the water effects. I'm using these little 0.2 ounce dispensers of five minute epoxy from the Dollar Tree and they can be stubborn to get out. But, but I'm also going to be adding like an equal amount of isopropyl alcohol. And for this, I'm adding some black ink. Now adding the isopropyl alcohol will make it flow so much easier and quicker and better. And we'll also actually extend the light, extend your time of using it a little bit. Not by much, but a little bit. 
Oh, just going to pour it into the top here. This is supposed to be oil. And then plop the flame effect right into it. And hold it for a little bit till it, you know. Okay, single drop of green ink. And this is going to be the water for the well, it's, well itself. Again, I'm using the same 5-minute epoxy that I got from the Dollar Tree. Man, this, these things can be stubborn to get out sometimes. But for this, I'm going to use two of them just to make sure I have enough coverage for the that will cover the entire thing. And I will be adding some isopropyl as well again. But this is a pretty simple process. And you know what the thing is? If I didn't add the isopropyl, 5-minute epoxy would never work for what i got to do next. But again, just stir it and stir it and stir it really well until it gets like a silver sheen to it. And it'll be good to go. I know I stir it a little bit longer than that, but I like to be thorough sometimes. <laughs> and because I added the alcohol into it, it pours it, it flows in there nice, like any, like a regular resin. Now it wasn't quite deep enough for my taste. I wanted to add another layer, but this I just mixed straight with, well, with some alcohol as well, and then poured in just to give it a little more depth. And it worked just fine. Oh yes, the magical moss moss paste. <laughs> the hider of mistakes galore. But no, I, I even without having to hide mistakes, I would put moss paste on this anyhow. Because it's a well, there's a lot of moisture. I want it there to be moss, a lot of moss on this. Ah, here we go. And like I said, if you've made mistakes during the process, this is the time to cover them up. <laughs> that's the great thing. That's why I like using moss so much. It looks good and it hides screw ups. And you see that right there where the hot glue got, I didn't fix that hot glue issue. Yeah, well, cover it with moss. And again, I said, just put moss wherever I think it looks good. I'll put a little more than I typically do on a project, but this is a well again. And it was going to have moss. Okay, I'm going to use some brown, dark brown pigment powder that I mixed up just to put in a little bit of extra shadows and dirt around the cracks and crevices and edges and anywhere I thought it 
would look good. But again, this is a quick and easy process, and hey, a pigment powder, you know what I'm using? More cheap makeup brushes that I got at the Dollar Tree. And if you don't have a Dollar Tree where you're at, you know, there's always like pound jobs or, you know, cheap stores that sell cheap makeup brushes. And again, this pigment powder is actually soft pastel chalk that I scraped off into a powder. And I'm using some isopropyl alcohol to mist on to the powder just to lock it in place because it would rub off if I didn't. Okay, I wanted to play around with some OSL around the flames and I wanted to try using pigment powder or, well, the soft pastel chalk I just scraped up. Again, grab the makeup brush and just apply it around the edge of the stone. This I honestly have never done this with pigment powder before. I wanted to give it a whirl, see what it looked like. And you know, it's like, okay, this, this this can work. And honestly, in the end, I was, I was relatively happy with it. I mean, there's a few things I might adjust in the future if I ever do this again, but I thought it worked out good. And just put a little bit of you know OSL around the edges there, and and event I locked it in place that eventually with some, another squirt of isopropyl alcohol. And here are some pretty glamour shots of the finished product. Even with the green tinted water and the second layer of clear I put on, you can still see a little bit of that gold coming through the bottom of the water, which, which I was really happy with. Overall, I would say, yeah, I like this project. It was a quick, fun little piece to do. Hey everybody, if you made it this part, it means you made it to the end. As, as always, I know I keep saying this, but it's true. I do appreciate it. If you like the video, hit the thumbs up. If you want to leave a comment, leave a comment down below. If you want to see more, click subscribe. And I don't release on a regular schedule. I release videos as soon as I get them edited and done, basically at the completion of each project. So if you don't want to miss out, hit the bell notification icon. That way you'll be able to see whatever I make. Again, guys, I re really appreciate all the subscribers and everything. When I first started this, I thought, yeah, I'll put a couple of videos out, maybe a couple people, like, no big deal. But I'm over 250 subscribers, and for a channel that's only like four months old, uh, without much, with zero budget, um, I, know, I know 250 is on a lot to most people, but to me, it's encouraging. So, thanks everybody. Thanks to all the subscribers. I do appreciate it. Let's get to a thousand. <laughs> Again, guys, I hope you really enjoyed this video. I know it, this was a simple little build, and I enjoyed making it. But again, guys, as always, the only, when you're making your terrain, the only person you got to worry about is you, because it is your terrain.